Good Wednesday evening to you. The date is June 14th, Wednesday, 2023. I want to welcome you to this midweek Bible study brought to you by the White All Church of Christ. My name is Kevin Law. I'm the minister here for the church. We are going through an expository study of Scripture. Today is no different. We are in the book of Exodus, and so if you have your Bibles, please turn to Exodus chapter 40. I'm going to be reading out of the English Standard Version. Uh, it's one that I currently use to teach and preach out of, and so I pray that you follow along with us as we uh, delve into this particular section of Scripture. Uh, also ask if you would at this time to join me in prayer uh, before we begin reading God's Word. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessing of life. Father, thank you for the reminder each and every day that we wake up and see the beautiful creation that you have made. Remind us, Father, that our focus not be on it, but it be on you, the one who designed and made all that we see and all that we enjoy. None of these things will be possible to enjoy, Father, were it not for your hand. And so we give you the glory for everything that exists today that we enjoy, uh, that we see around us, and that we are blessed by. Encourage us as we delve into your word. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Exodus chapter 40, we're going to begin in verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, On the first day of the first month, you shall erect the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and you shall put it in the ark of the testimony, and you shall screen the ark with the veil, and you shall bring in the table and arrange it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps. And you shall put the golden altar for incense before the ark of the testimony and set up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. You shall set the, burnt, the altar of burnt offerings before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Verse 8, and you shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen for the gate of the court. Then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it and consecrate it and all of its furniture so that it may become holy. You shall also anoint the altar of burnt offering and all of its utensils and consecrate the altar so that the altar may become most holy. You shall also anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate it. Exodus chapter 40 verses 1 through 11. God had instructed Moses to build the tabernacle, and he told him how he wanted uh, the tabernacle to look. And so it, what, what it did was it represented, the tabernacle represent, represented the culmination uh, of God's redemptive work all the way through the Exodus. Uh, it represented, uh, I believe, an avenue for God's people to come to God uh, if you'll remember from the beginning in the Garden of Eden, God desired that man walk and talk with him uh, in, in the cool of the day in the garden. And so he had blessed man, he had blessed Adam and Eve, but because of man's sin and going away from the things of God, um, God knew that the only way that man was going to be coming back was through his hand and not man's hand. So... Um, God redemptively brought the Israelites out of Egypt. Uh, out of Egypt, we read through the book of Exodus, this fresh beginning um, of their experience. And so God is establishing the tabernacle. Uh, also, I believe, to illuminate his, um, his presence, to, to show his glory uh, coming down from heaven and resting in the tabernacle. Um, there are various ways that we remember and that we celebrate uh, the fact that we are saved through Christ Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. We come together on the Lord's Day. Uh, we partake of the Lord's Supper. Uh, we celebrate when somebody commits their life to the Lord Jesus Christ through baptism. Uh, we praise God in the assembly. We uh, exalt his name through song. And so we remember what God has done for us as well. The fact that we have received salvation as, as well as what those of old 
receive freedom from their sins as well. The tabernacle itself was designed by God, um, and it had increasing levels of holiness uh, the further in that you went. So if you came into the entrance, you're first going to see uh, the altar for the burnt offerings, and behind that is going to be the basin or the labor filled with water for ceremonial washing. But the further you go into the tabernacle, uh, the holier it gets, because as you, well, only one could enter the Holy of Holies, and that was the high priest. But as you go into the Holy of Holies, uh, it consisted of gold, silver, um, and other precious uh, gemstones like that, because the closer you came to the Holy of Holies, um, the closer you were to God. And so this is this is really an exciting picture that we see coming from uh, the Exodus, but we also see that the glory of the Lord shines in us today, in that those of whom are immersed into Christ, who take him on in baptism, receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God, and in so doing, we show the world around us his glory. Um, and so we are the temple of the living God. It's not that the building is consecrated or made holy today, it's that we are the temple of the Holy God. So, um, Another point that I want to share with you out of this section is taken from verses 12 through 15 of Exodus chapter 40. So follow along with me, beginning in verse 12. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and shall wash them with water and put on Aaron the holy garments and you shall anoint him and consecrate him so that he may serve me as priest. And you shall bring his sons also and put cold coats on them and anoint them and you shall as you anointed their father, that they may serve me as priests. So this is a, <coughs> excuse me, this is a perpetual priesthood in that Aaron, only Aaron and his sons can serve as priests in the Levitical priesthood. Um, their, uh, and their anointing shall admit to them a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. And Moses did all that God had commanded him. So he did. Um, I believe it's it's quite obvious that God chose to be merciful to Aaron even after Aaron had allowed the Israelites to make the golden calf to fall down. And it's not that he wasn't worshiping the Lord, but he was trying to get to the Lord through the golden calf. And it was an abomination to him. So much so that Moses... Um, actually melted down the golden calf and had the people drink it. I thought that was fascinating. But uh, in so doing, he is uh, showing the Israelites that God and God alone is the only one to be served. And so Moses is to receive kudos for that. But Aaron, uh, I can never understand why Aaron did what he did other than to know that he shaped this golden calf after many of the gods, I'm sure, that he saw while in Egypt. And so it was a great act of mercy that God had extended to Aaron to allow him to be the high priest. And it demonstrates God's desire to cleanse and to use imperfect people uh, for his holy work. So think about it. How many perfect people does God have to work with? The answer is none. None of us are perfect. None of us are sinless. If we say that we do not have sin, we're a liar and the truth is not in us and we make him out to be a liar. And so even though we're all considered sinners, we're also considered redeemed. And we also celebrate our thanksgiving of salvation through Christ Jesus and um, realize that he is the one that's made it possible for us. God's intention for all of humanity is that we become um, a kingdom of priests, so to speak, so to speak, not just not just a kingdom with priests, but a kingdom of priests. Um, God set up the priestly system in the old covenant because of the sinfulness of humanity and the people's need for a mediator. God allowed that to happen, and He did that on purpose. But His ultimate purpose is that we come to God directly. And the only way that we're going to come to God directly is through Christ Jesus. The only way that we're going to access the throne room of God is to go to him through, um, through the Lord. So we eliminate the need of another priest. 
And because of the work of Jesus on the cross, um, that's where, <coughs> excuse me, the temple veil was rent in two from top to bottom. And so when the temple veil was rent in two from top to bottom, it was symbolically Jesus's body that was being rent in two. And in so doing, we as God's people today have full access to the throne of God. And that is incredible. The Hebrew writer reminds us of that in Hebrews chapter four, that when we come to the throne of God, we come in boldness and in confidence because Christ Jesus, our mediator, our intercessor, came and tabernacled among us. That's the significance of the tabernacle that you see in the Old Covenant. It is a picture of Jesus coming and being our way to connect to the Father. And the last thing that I want to point out is found in verses 34 through 38 of Exodus chapter 40. If you'll turn there, beginning in verse 34, Exodus 40, <coughs> 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And throughout all of their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day the fire was on it by night. I want you to envision that. I want you to envision uh, how spectacular that would have been uh, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all of their journeys. And so God gives them explicit instructions on how to worship him, how to come to him. And the only way that we can have access to the father is because of his grace and his mercy. And so the cloud uh, that had led the people, filled the tabernacle, and revealed the uh, holy uh, glory of God. It, it revealed his, um, his brightness, the fact that he is light, and in him is there, there is no darkness at all. And there's no way that the people could have approached that light apart from God's grace. Uh, the people had been unfaithful. The people had done terrible things in the sight of the Lord. <clears throat> they had immediately broken the, the commandments, the Ten Commandments, especially Aaron violating the Second Commandment. So the tabernacle was established as a temporary measure for God to dwell with his people. Um, that's how it began. And I was act actually asked a question by an individual the other day as to when the first church building was erected. Uh, and I thought it was... Uh, in the third century, and, and, and I was correct, in the Constantinian area where he legalized religion, that's when the first church building was constructed. We use buildings out of a matter of uh, convenience and expediency. It's not necessary that we meet in a building, but it, it just seems to make more sense because God commands us in the new covenant to come together as an assembly of people. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together so much more as you see the day approaching. So uh, we, we, we are, uh, we use this building as a, as a case of expediency, but the early church began in homes and um, from persecution. So the tabernacle is a temp temporary measure for God to dwell with his people. And the eternal fulfillment is found in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And so uh, everything points to Jesus. And so all these pictures are pointing specifically to Jesus and reminding us the tabernacle of old was just a way of presenting us the beauty, uh, the glory, the magnitude, the grace, the mercy, um, all those good things that come from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Um, I like what A.W. Tozer says in closing. Uh, he said, God wants worshipers before workers. Indeed, the only acceptable workers are those who have learned the lost art of worship. God wants worshipers before workers. And we live in an area where we are blue collar and very industrious and uh, striving to put in a good day's effort for good day's work, for good day's pay. But salvation is free. 
And because it's free, we should uh, allow that thought to overwhelm us to the point to where we want to willingly give back to him. We want to willingly serve him. We want to willingly obey him. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, and remember, we are in the book of Exodus. We are just finishing up, getting ready to go into the book of Leviticus and the sacrificial systems again. Um, and so thank you for joining us on this journey. And I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you have a great day. Pray that you remember the one who gave it to you as well.